Let's talk about how to plan the sessions you want to attend at Silicon Valley CodeCamp. Now that we have the schedule actually live, you can go through and select your sessions, and there's multiple tools to do that. So first, you must log into the site. So I've created a sample user called Joe Plummer. I'm going to put in his top secret password. So now you'll see Joe Plummer is logged in. Something that's important, if you see this with some little red arrows around it, that means that you're not completely registered. So it's important that you go to the profile page, and a couple things are critical. One, most important, is that you actually say you're going to attend the event. So you have to check attending Saturdays, attending Sunday, or both. If you want to volunteer to help, you can select that here. If you want to get texts about session changes, because even though we tell our speakers this is completely final, sometimes things just happen. So if you notice, we have a section, Session Change Notifications, text or email. You can say, I want to be notified by text or email for all sessions I want to attend. Or you could say all sessions, which might be a lot of text. So you can say, I just want to hear by email, or I just want to hear by text, or in this case, I want to hear by both. So now every time a session changes, you automatically get notified. And in a minute, I'll show you where to actually see that list of changes if somehow you didn't check this or you missed the notification. So let's now save. And now our information has been saved. So where do you actually see the sessions? Before you can pick sessions, sometimes it's nice just to get an overview. So if you go to Programs, Sessions, that's where all our session tools are, and look at Session Overview what comes up, and I like to look at it in full screen, it's a little easier to see, so I click the full screen button, and you also might want to bookmark this, because it's easy to get back to, and you can see we've got all our sessions, 9.45 on Saturday, 11.15 on Saturday, all the way down to 2.45 on Sunday, and of course these are hyperlinks, so you can click on them, open a new tab, and you can see here's the details for that particular session. So one thing to note, here it says your status is not interested. If I actually want to go to that session, I can just click on that. The first state says I'm interested. If I click on it again or look at the dropdown, the state that I really want to mark is attending. So now I've basically said that I intend to in attend that session. So let's look at the tools for actually saying what you want to attend. If I go to Program Sessions, the easiest one and the one we've had for 10 years is just this Sessions page. And if you notice, you can scroll through and you can say, I just want to look at professional sessions or I just want to look at kids sessions. And if you look at kids, you'll see they're all tagged with kids, but likely you're, you're a professional and you just want to see the professional sessions. So here now we have all our sessions and notice here's one that's already marked for attending. We may have a couple others marked for attending. What you do here is you just can go through the list. If, for example, you want to say, what are the sessions from IBM? I can say IBM. And if those speakers put IBM in their profile, they'll show up. So say you want to go to all three IBM, you would just click on the link, interested, attending, or you can do the drop down and say attending. And so now you're marked to go to all three IBM sessions. One thing that's nice on the desktop, if you hover over the details tab, it'll tell you more about that session. Hover over the details again, more about that session. So you don't actually have to click on the details tab, which I can just say, I'm going to right click and say, open a new window so I don't actually leave this page. But I can go directly to that session by just clicking on the details, and here it is. And of course, you know, I, I want you to tweet all these sessions, so all you have to do is click on the Share This Session link, and you'll automatically be redirected to Twitter, and a nice tweet will be formed for you. So let's go back to the Sessions page, get rid of the IBM search, and it'll immediately show us all the sessions again. So you have to, you have to see that this, you can filter these by saying, I just want to show... Saturday, I'll unclick Sunday, so these now are my Saturday. I just want to look at 9 at 11.15. And you can see all the sessions that are going to be at 11.15 showing. So filtering is helpful, but we have much better tools for showing sessions. So let's look at two of those other tools. If I say Program, Sessions, 
And let's go to my favorite, which is Session Planner B, and I pull that up, and this actually works better the bigger screen you have. We're a little limited in our display here, but you can kind of get the idea. What this does is this shows us a view of all the sessions on all the days. So here's all the 945, 1115, and you can look at each, all the sessions, which is about 22 sessions on every time slot. They're all here. But what's really powerful is if you just want to know the JavaScript sessions, you can just type in this search, JavaScript, and as soon as you stop typing, it'll show you all the JavaScript sessions. If you wanted to say, look for just Docker sessions, I can type Docker, and here are all the Docker sessions. So it's very easy to see the sessions that you might be interested in. So, for example, say I wanted to, to look at all the sessions that are iOS, for example. So we have a bunch of iOS sessions. Notice if I click on the session itself, on the interest button on top, it actually shows me now I'm interested. Click again. I'm planning to attend. So notice that if I say I'm interested in attending integrated sensor data and I click on that, it unclicks the one below it, native Apple Watch development. So you can only attend one session at any given time slot. And just, just to be clear, these aren't actually reservations. These are intentions that we use to make sure we allocate big enough rooms to sessions so that hopefully everybody can get into all the sessions. So there's some interesting filters you can use on this page. In addition, just be able to type free text. You can say, I just want to look at sessions for a given track. Like I just want to look at, say, the Windows Azure track. This shows me all the sessions that are in the Windows Azure track. Say I want to look at, at sessions that are only advanced for all of CodeCamp. I, can I need to uncheck the Windows Azure track. These are all the sessions that the speakers have marked as advanced. So let's go back and say we want to look at all the sessions again. We can look at by category. Remember, these are the major categories the presenters have marked. So I can say I just want to look at databases. Well, we know there's a lot more databases than this. But this is all people actually marked. So if I uncheck everything, it goes back to the full list. And of course, if I want to make the list a little easier to see, I can unclick the full title. And now I'm just getting the description, and I don't see all. So it's easier to view the sessions. Another trick is this can get kind of annoying, clicking on interest. And as you're clicking on things, if you click on the URL, it takes you right to the session. You can unclick this, and now you don't, now you don't have the button. One of the other nice things is you can hover over sessions. If I click this show pop-up, if I hover over a session, it will bring up a description and the speaker. So it just gives you an easier way if you want to look and see more details without having to jump any place in particular. So another place to look is Program Sessions, Session Planner A. And we call that the tablet desktop version. And the reason is we're using ext.js5, which works pretty well on a tablet. So my suggestion is if you're on your tablet, this is probably an easier view to use than if you're actually on, your, on, on a desktop, which on a desktop, I think Planner Session B is probably easier. So what we have here is we have all the sessions listed by time in, in a more or less a square format. So here's 945, if I scroll down, Here's 1115, scroll down, here's 145, et cetera. So if I want to know more information about, so let's say, look, let's look at this session, Go Language and Google Cloud. If I click on this or touch it on a tablet, notice the right side appears with more details. That detail also includes the ability to switch from interested to attending. So let's say you want to go to that session. And notice we already have an attending. So if I click attending, this one turns green and the previous one turned orange, which said you're interested. So you can be interested in lots of sessions, but you can only actually attend one. So notice if I say, oh, I actually want to attend this one. If I say attending, watch what happens to this green button up here. It goes away and turns orange because, again, you can only, you can only say I, I want to see sessions at one particular time. And of course we have filters here. 
So you can filter for actually words in the session. So if I type XAML, for example, it's going to show me just the titles that have the word XAML in it. This search isn't quite as aggressive as the one in Session Planner B, but it does work. And if you want to type performance, it'll, it'll just search on the titles. And of course, it's live. So as soon as you unsearch it, the data returns. You can also look at kids sessions here, independent of pro sessions. These are all the kids sessions. But if you're not a kid and you haven't signed up for the kid camp and you try to say attending, you're going to get a warning that says, well, you're not a kid. You can't sign up unless you're in the kid track. So let's turn the professional sessions on, the kid sessions off. One thing you can also do is group by time. And so by default, it groups by time. But now notice everything is alphabetical. That might be easier if you're looking for specific sessions. And of course, you can go back to the home page by simply clicking the little home icon up here. And it takes you back. So now, finally, we can go back to the session overview page. And we can see what we've done. Let's go to full screen, which hopefully you've bookmarked. And it will actually show you what sessions you've marked that you want to attend. So notice here it says you're interested, 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 interested. And at 11.15, you actually p picked one you're planning to attend. So this is pretty bulky. You don't really want to see all these other sessions. So what you can do on top is you can say, I just want to filter by plan to attend. And it'll show you just your plan to attend. But say you want to see interest and plan to attend. I know I and P to A is a little confusing, but that's what it means interested and plan to attend. And this shows all your sessions. So then the obvious thing you want to do next is you want to print this. And so at the very bottom, there's a nice little picture of a printer. If I want to print that, and let's just change it to save to a PDF so you can kind of see what it'll look like, I can save it. And the session overview is saved. And now you have a PDF, which basically is exactly these sessions in a nice printable format. So that's it. We're going to post news on our brand new news page. So if you click on news, you'll see all the information that we're basically sending in emails plus some extra information. The videos that we do, the how-to videos, we've already done looking for volunteers. We've done uh, how to sign up for the kids camp. We'll continue to post all our news pages to all our news posts to this page. So if you have an RSS reader and you want to subscribe, we have a very nice RSS feed. So this is where all new information will go. Well, thanks for listening and hope to see you very soon.